This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop about research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared from our students, faculty, and other members of our USC community. and welcome back to another episode of the Turby Voices. As usual, I am your host, or one of your hosts. My name is Paul Ledesma, Executive Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the Viterbi School of Engineering. And hi, everyone. My name is Emily Powis, and I'm a senior studying biomedical engineering. And who is that joining us here in this particular episode? Hello, everyone. I'm Elena, and I am a senior studying chemical engineering. Elena, and you want to tell people where you're from? Yes, everyone. I am from Townsend, Delaware, and now I'm in California. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, as a quick side note, it was so good to see both of you yesterday on campus for our events. Uh, that was super fun. So it was actually good to see uh, people actually in person. And then we actually had a, a really good time with, with people at the events. You all did a great job hosting everybody. So thanks for doing that. Um, for those of you that are, are not aware of what's going on, uh, we obviously have admitted students and we have admitted student events happening on campus. It's kind of our first return back to actual campus things uh, that we're very excited about. And uh, yesterday was our first event. It was, a, it was an exciting day with lots of people on campus and we're pumped to host a lot more. So if you are an admitted student, you haven't done that yet, make sure you book one of our Explore USC events on campus uh, as soon as you possibly can, because uh, we have a lot of fun showing you off everything that's going on. But that's besides the point. Uh, Elena, you bring a topic in an episode to us. You want to tell us a little bit more about it? Yes, it is. So this week's podcast was a chemical engineering roundtable. And within this podcast, I kind of invited different chemical engineers of different emphases, as well as different um, grades to kind of talk about what it's like to be a chemical engineer at USC. Awesome. And so chemical engineering is such uh, an interesting degree program and kind of area of interest because a lot of students well no one has before that when they come out of high school no one has experience in chemical engineering uh, and probably the most experience you could possibly get is just hey you know i like chemistry that sounds cool and the ideas of chemistry uh, chemical engineering the applications of chemical engineering whether that's involved in energy or in pharmaceuticals the ideas of nanotechnology sustainable energy uh, polymers and material science it has so many different opportunities so i hope uh, that we're going to have a really great discussion about that so let's get out of the way, hand it over to Elena and her friends to talk about all of the different things that they do inside of chemical engineering and how they got into it. And we'll see you on the other side. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Retirvi Students Podcast. My name is Elena Kiocha, and today I will be hosting the Chemical Engineering Roundtable podcast. Um, I am a senior studying chemical engineering with an emphasis in petroleum. I am from Townsend, Delaware. And with me, I have some lovely chemical engineers of different emphasis and majors that, and grades that will be introducing themselves. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hari Sridhara. I'm a junior. Um, obviously studying chemical engineering, but with an emphasis in sustainable energy, and I'm from a suburb of Chicago, Naperville, Illinois. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Julia Lee, and I am a senior in chemical engineering with a biochem emphasis, and I am originally from Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, everyone. My name is Alejandro Lomeli, but I also go by Alex. I am a chemi with a material science emphasis, and I am from Baldwin Park, California. Hi, everyone. I'm Agatha Mabel. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I am a sophomore studying chemical engineering with no emphasis. Okay, now that we all have met the crew, we're just going to jump right into it. So um, with the introductions, you kind of heard four different emphasis and I just wanted to inform you all that chemical engineering is a major that has six different emphasis. Um, I couldn't get nanotechnology or environmental with me today but 
the, the six listed out are biochemical, which is what Julie is studying, environmental, nanotechnology, petroleum, which I am studying, polymers and materials, which Alex is studying, and sustainable, and sustainable energy, which Harvey is studying. And so with that, from the long list of chemical engineering emphasis, um, what does chemical engineering kind of mean? Like, what is chemical engineering? Um, I guess I can I can start with this one. I because I was kind of caught off guard with not like caught off guard when I when I started this program uh, because like I selected it because I'm like oh I know I like engineering I know I like chemistry um, and seems like those would go together in a major that I that I would potentially enjoy. Um, that's not to say I don't enjoy the major now, but it is less. I would say it's less chemistry and more. Uh, there's a lot more physics and process management behind it. Um, more facilitation of how how things are working in it from a chemical perspective, but less of the like super super deep intricate like molecular science I guess that I anticipated. Um, but again, as as I said, that's not necessarily a bad thing because I do I do enjoy physics, I do enjoy math, and all of that is still coming into play um, in the program in the degree program. Go on with that. I also didn't expect chemi to be more applications versus. Um, hard science like chemical or chemistry and that really caught me off guard and it's more about production and manufacturing of products on a larger scale. Yeah I definitely agree with that um, like similar to Hari like I initially thought like oh like I really like chemistry and engineering and math like maybe chemical engineering is right for me but I guess I learned like it's more about like process development and um, like manufacturing and like economics and safety and you get to really learn how to like solve problems rather than like very much like chemistry because chemical engineering is really not like just chemistry. Yeah I think I would join the whole chemistry bandwagon here um, because I took AP Chem in high school and I loved it and you know oh chemistry chemical engineering has to be pretty similar right but I think the biggest reason why I stuck around is kind of like what everyone's talking about, you know, the fact that a discipline can house everything from like manufacturing to process development. So like when you ask yourself, like, what is chemical engineering? It's, it's interesting because chemical engineering is a lot of those things at the same time. And as a college student who doesn't always, you know, exactly know where I see myself five or 10 years from now, I find a little bit of, um, ease knowing that what I have studied um, can land me in a lot of different places. And I think I've talked to other chemists who also feel that way. Yeah, that, that's all four of us just said that it was not what we expected it to be. And that's, that's kind of silly. Um, uh, but again, like it's, it's not uh, like it's not bad. It's not just because something isn't what um, you make it out to be. I think I would prefer it this way because I can see like actually how what I'm learning is how it's going to or it's or I can actually see how it's going to be applied in a real world, real world situation, rather than just figuring out like, oh, this reacts into this and this reacts into this. And I have no idea how to apply that for something that will actually matter and will actually um, be able to use in the workforce someday, wherever, whenever that might be. Um, I also appreciate that a lot of it is logic based and problem solving based. And we are like, apart from the actual physical content that we're learning, like the degree in the program is like getting us to be really good at just thinking through problems. And that's like generally what I feel like a lot of engineering is um, across the board. Um, but just our perspective that we have towards that problem solving, I feel like is the big, the big takeaway that even if we don't end up working in like a specific reactor design specific uh, industry or some sort of other industry that's very, very tailored and like we take a class towards, uh, there are certainly other skills that like I, I'm certain will um, apply literally wherever I end up um, just because it is that versatile of an engineering degree. No, I agree with you guys. Cause like, I know like with what is chemical engineering, I just kind of liked AP chem as well. But one thing that surprised me till this day as a senior is the fact that there is so much math. There is so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so much oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And like I liked math, like in middle school and like high school and stuff. But it's, it's past a lot tense there. I, I heard you use past tense there. You liked math. You know, I don't know. Math has done me dirty in college. You know, 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's been a rough time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, I, I just feel like with chemical engineering, we just kind of got to experience like a whole like broad field. Like we, we did more than we thought we were going to do. So like we did take OCHEM and like we have to take PCHEM and obviously a lot of chemistry, but there is a lot of like math, like past math courses, you know, like our classes are mainly like problem solving math problems with like integration of physics, like you all mentioned earlier. And so it's just like with that, we're just going to pivot off of that. So like, what is your favorite chemical engineering course so far? You know, this is an exciting question because I just kind of have a broad range of, of grades. So we get to hear from the seniors, the juniors, and the sophomores of the classes that you've taken so far within the major. Um, I, I, I think the, my favorite class that I've taken so far is actually a material science class that was required for my emphasis. Um, so it's not necessarily part of like the core chemical, or enger- chemical engineering uh, curriculum. It was it's MASC 350 um, Nanostructured Materials Processing and Design, I think is the name of the class. Um, and the reason that appealed to me, um, unfortunately, it wasn't like the 8 a.m. twice a week did not appeal to me, uh, but I actually found it to be encouraging and like I was encouraged to get out of bed and go to this class because it really felt um, applicable to like current technologies and current developments. The premise of the class, again, it was from like a material science background, which is related to chemical engineering. It's the same department here in, here at USC. Um it was just going through one after another, the coolest and most modern develops in mater- developments in material science that are like coming out in the past decade or so that haven't even found their way to like commercial applications, um, but have the potential to maybe like, I don't know, 10, 15 years from now, like maybe change the way that solar panels function to make them so much more efficient or change the way certain materials based on their properties that are just being worked on in the lab right now that are just being discovered and have yet to break through into quote unquote, the real world. Um, so it's kind of like, I, I kind of perceive that class as like a glimpse into the future, like a little time travel, like, oh, these are the things that scientists are just discovering right now. And now when it starts becoming mainstream and people actually put it into practice 20 years from now, I can like be like, oh, I saw this, or like I learned about this back when it was like in its baby steps, when it was just being published in a paper um, back in like 2020 or something like that. Um, and that whole like vibe of being able to see what is coming next. Um, I found really, really appealing. What about the rest of you all? Um, I mean, that's definitely a hard question, but for me, I think it would be like biochemical engineering, say CHE 489 for specifically for my emphasis. I think with a lot of the chemical engineering um, core classes, a lot of it focuses on like oil and gas and process development while like that's not entirely like my main interest so I think taking biochemical engineering was like looking at a new side of things of chemical engineering and applying it to like the biotech field and looking at like vaccines and how to scale up um, like vaccine development and I think that was definitely really interesting to learn about because it kind of gives you like another like avenue for application for the major um materials 455 even though I'm not a materials emphasis I took the class as one of my electives and it was really cool to be able to simulate something that we can't see like one of the atoms that we worked on and know the property changes and it kind of did pique my interest a little bit in that field what was the title of that class I think I I um, picked it so (laughs) I'm just curious computational atom mystic uh simulation something like that all right cool keeping it i'll keep it in mind yeah okay (laughs) for me i think one of my favorite classes so far has been chem 430 which is like i think it's like pchem one and i think the reason why i enjoyed it so much was because in a lot of ways it catered to like the version of me four years ago, I'm like, oh, I like AP Chem and that's why I'm doing Chem E because I think the professor um, and like the assignments we did in that class made it so that you had to think about things at the molecular, like, you know, physical level in like a lot of detail. And I like to, you know, imagine relationships like that in my head. And, you know, ultimately that, that wasn't something that I was 
personally getting from a lot of the other engineering classes that are part of the CAT curriculum. So, you know, nerd it out a little bit there. Probably I'm gonna take PCAM 2 for the OCAM, I mean, the OCAM, the chemistry elective. I am gonna amend my answer. I kept my uh, realm in my head to just like the chem chemical engineering and math material science classes, but I do think um, PCAM physical chemistry is certainly up there on that list for me. Um, again, it seems like a lot of us have like that whole, oh, AP chemistry was just like fun problem solving games, like the entire class. And that like really tickled our brain in a certain way and physical chemistry that um, really like catered to that because it just felt like lo solving logic problems at like in from a chemical perspective in like an applicable way. The professor is very, very kind um, and <laughs> very knowledgeable, too. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to put a little asterisk on my previous answer and I'm probably going to like tie it with with PCAM. So thank you for bringing that one up. <laughs> PCAM was a fun class, but unfortunately it wasn't my favorite class. Um, mine was actually <clears throat> in the patrol. <laughs> you <can> gasping, <laughs> Alex? <laughs> of course. <laughs> mine was actually within the petroleum department. Um, it was formation data sensing with wall logs, PTE 461. And like, I don't know, as a kid, I just always liked rocks. I like knowing what was beneath the ground. And this is exactly what the class does. It's taking just kind of engineering equipment. It's looking at like data, like data logs, wall logs to analyze what is below the ground, whether it's oil, water, gas, shell rock, like graphite, just literally looking at what's in the ground using technology and interpreting that. And I just thought that like, it was such a fun class. I got to create my own like wall laws. I got to analyze stuff. I got to just like learn about just different sensing materials. So it's like, we hear like with our cell phones, we're like, oh yeah, like I have Wi-Fi or whatever, but there's things that kind of works like Wi-Fi sending signals within the ground to kind of tell us what is beneath there. Like if, even if we can't physically see it. And I just thought that was a really cool class to take. So, so the general trend I'm hearing is like a lot of us like the classes that we chose for ourselves, which is sick because that means like the emphases are doing the emphases are doing their job. Like we're choosing an emphasis and we like our emphasis and um, it's getting us fired up or excited about the stuff that we're learning. But that's also like uh, kind of or the converse of that is like, oh, the standard chemical engineering curriculum isn't really appeasing our interests to the extent that we wish it would. Um, I don't know if other people are on the same page as me with that. Um, but like the emphasis, I agree that the emphases are doing a great job in like keeping me involved and keeping me invested in the stuff that I'm learning as part of the curriculum. No, like you make a valid point, um, just especially because I feel like the chemical engineering um, major in itself is structured. Like I know personally for me and my grade, we take almost the exact same courses outside of GEs or emphasis, like our core classes are the same. So it's like, and we take them at the same time because there's, we don't have different sections once you get into, um, not even upper division, like once you get past Chemi 120, we're all in the same course from then. So yeah, it does make sense because it is very structured. Any opinions from any of you guys? I, I have something, <laughs> something else. Um, the major here is quite small. Um, as you said, Elena, like after that first intro chemi class, all the classes are offered in only the fall or only the spring. So you have like a set track for all of the core requirements that are required of you to graduate. And some people may say that's a bad thing because like with scheduling flexibility, um, like there's not much you can do there because like um, if you want to say take a co-op for a semester, then the classes that you'd be taking the next semester have uh, prerequisites that you haven't filled yet. Um, but I, I saw the opposite and I'm kind of happy that that's that situation because then you get really, really close friends with the people who are in your class because you see them for a couple hours a day or like, like many hours a week for many, many weeks, like starting maybe your sophomore year all the way to when you graduate because every single one of your um, core classes, you're going through the same hardships and taking the same exams and really getting to know each other and hanging out even outside of classes like studying and doing homework together. Um, and like if the major was bigger and there were different sections, professors, classes offered over the summer and everyone's on a different track, that would no longer be the reality. Um, so I certainly see the appeal in that. And I, I do like that point that you brought up. What about you, Julia? What are your opinions on just like the chemical engineering course structure? I mean, yeah, definitely like similar to what Hari said, like we have like a tight knit kind of community within like each of our grades because we've been taking the same classes together since freshman year. And I, I mean, I 
definitely do enjoy that because we do have smaller class sizes, um, like easier access to teachers and like office hours and getting help. In addition, like we're, we know the same people who we're going to go into the classes with. So you can like make study groups beforehand and like know exactly like who you're going into with. So I, I guess that kind of gives you more comfort. Um, but definitely like the one thing that makes it difficult is like class scheduling. And I think like a lot of us have dealt with like class conflicts um, and all that stuff. And it makes it really hard to schedule your classes within like chemical engineering and trying to take classes outside of chemical engineering. So, I mean, there's definitely like downsides and upsides to the whole like coursework. And then maybe like in the future, if there was like a balance between like maybe like having like another section available for one of the bigger classes, it could be helpful to for people to schedule um, classes and actually take some classes that they might enjoy as well. Because I feel like because of the tight class schedule, like I wasn't able to take some of these like fun classes outside of the major. No, I feel that. Um, I know personally, I've had, I think, four to five course conflicts in my USC career. Like there would be there would be times where I'd have to leave one class halfway to go to another class to take an exam or just like take one class completely virtually, like asynchronously because of a course conflict during the pandemic. And it, it is due to the fact that our chemical engineering and the courses are so structured. But luckily, like your professors kind of work with you with that, like they have to fill out a course conflict form. So they do know that you're not just not showing up to class, like you have another class at the same time. You have to like figure out a balance between what, how you're going to like do your homework or attend in-person exams or even virtual exams if both classes are occurring at the same time. Alex, you got anything to add to that? Um, I feel like it's kind of the opposite for me. Having so many classes with my peers, it doesn't really help us get closer. In a way, like I'm kind of tired of seeing them only because um, I feel like my peers haven't really made the effort or like when we do try to make the effort, it does. it's like we don't really mesh well. And I don't see us like being that close knit, which kind of sucks since we see them so much in the day. Not to say that that won't change because I still have like two more years for that to change, but yeah. No, that makes sense. Would you attribute that more to like the fact that you're a sophomore now? So most of your freshman year was online, was during the pandemic. So you couldn't really like interact with your class in person? Um, I mean, I guess for me, technically it's different because I'm technically a junior. So I did have a freshman year but I am a transfer. So maybe for the rest of my sophomore class, that could be the case for them, that they were online with each other and they didn't have that chance to meet and make that connection early on. So mm -hmm. now that we are in person, it's kind of like, I've already seen you, but I don't know you kind of thing. I see. No, I, I certainly know people who, who are on the sophomore course, course track or right now, and they, they are in the same boat. Like, having that full, like the start of their college experience being from the room that they entirely grew up in or something like that, mm -hmm. like certainly made it difficult for them to um, set or like fulfill the expectations of what they had of college. Uh, but, and like, I, I lost my sophomore year too. And that means I only had um, Kemi 120 at, and that, that class only had like half of the students in my major. Um, but going into my junior year, like, <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but like the, because the classes like can be so challenging, that's going to be one of the big things that brings you together. Like you're all going to walk out of a midterm, like huffing and puffing. That was so awful. I don't want to see my score about that ever. And then like, you'll see someone who you haven't really talked to before, who's in the same boat and then we'll chat about it for a second. It's like a kind of like a, not like a depressing thing to bond over, but it is like a thing that, that you <laughs> kind of like get to know people over. It's like that mutual, I really don't want to say suffering, but it's like a mutual or like a shared sense of hardship that we like, we all know we're going to grow and get past and everything. But in the moment, like it's really nice to have that sense of solidarity with the people around us. No, I agree with that. I feel like, yeah, that's sort of one of the reasons why like I, I stuck with chemical engineering 
was because of the fact that like I didn't have to go through it alone, you know, because a lot of tears have been shed with because of this major, like because of my classes. But with that, I like never shed them by myself. You know, I always had like other people that would like encourage me, will help me out when I was feeling low or when they were feeling low, I could do the same for them. So like, how are, how are you kind of right? Like misery does love company. But I feel like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's such a great message that we're sending for people who are interested in this program. But the thing is like, like, the courses are hard for a reason because at the end of the day, you get to kind of like choose what you want to do just because of how versatile the major is. Like we're working hard now so that we can work hard after we graduate but at the most like for the most part we did most of the hard work now you know then we just have to apply what we've learned but outside of our chemical engineering courses um I know that some of you guys have had the chances to kind of take other classes outside of just like STEM so what are some cool classes like your favorite class you've taken outside of a and outside of like the STEM field I'm taking badminton right now Oh, that's awesome. a blast it's it's two hours a week um no no homework uh very very easy midterm because we are allowed to use the study guide on the midterm and the study guide had the same questions as the midterm um so it's like a joke of a class but like i haven't played badminton since senior year of high school and being able to just dedicate two hours a week to that to not care about anything else and just because it's a heck of a lot of fun um that i can certainly put that up on my list what about you so, alex oh my bad sorry oh, you're good julia i'm sorry for cutting you off <laughs> yeah i i think this is still technically a maternity class but i'll just include it because it really was not for me um last year i took a machine learning principles class and you know, of course, nothing to do with Kemi, but I, I really just appreciated the fact that, you know, I would pull up to the lecture and the professor would be like, do you guys want to learn how Netflix um, creates recommendations for you based on your watch history? And we would go like through the theory on, you know, how a process like that gets made. And then we would have projects where we would do like a bunch of Python code that incorporated the theory so we could make our own like data analysis and incorporate that to machine learning. And I think that's one of the classes that encouraged me to explore like computational stuff more. I took, you know, a Python class. I'm currently trying to recruit for some like computer science summer internships just because I, um, you know, really appreciate that field in addition to Kemi. And maybe a little bit of a tangent here, but you know, on top of everything we've said about chemi coursework, I would say like for USC in general, like one of the things that I really do like is that you get the liberty to do something like that. Um, you know, I have a bunch of empty units for my last year since I'm starting my senior year next year. And, you know, like I'm thinking about taking a biochem class, a computer science class, maybe a third language. And I think there's a lot of places, um, a lot of universities where students don't always have that option. Um, and that's one of the biggest reasons why, like, you know, I always hype up USC. Thank you, Alex. Miss Julia, what about you? Um, well, I took a urban gangs class for my GE. Um, that was super fun. I think it's definitely like, wow, like you're learning something like very different from STEM and your typical major requirements. And I think it was just a good break from like doing math every day and like doing problems every day. And it was also just like really interesting to learn about like how gangs are structured and like the history of gangs. And the professor was like really integrated into like, like the gang life. And he had a lot of friends that were in gangs and it was definitely really cool to like hear his perspective. And it was just like a fun class overall. It was super easy. Um, I definitely learned a lot and it was definitely really cool to take. Um, but yeah, also similar to Alex's point, like I've taken like a few like Python classes and stuff. And I think being able to like set up yourself with like other technical skills outside of chemical engineering is definitely very necessary to go into the field because I feel like there's a lot of different things that you just need to learn on the go and like being able to know and like being like a holistic person will definitely like help you in the future. 
I agree with that. Agog, what are some of your some of your favorite non-comedic courses? Um, right now I'm taking a global religions course and I really like it because of the perspective that our professor gives. Like I've taken um, world religion courses in the past, but I always like ended up not liking them. And this time I like how he brings people of that faith, like a bunch of guest lectures, we watch movies about different faith backgrounds. And it's just really an easy course because all you have to do is show up to lecture and just have conversations about it. And it gives you so much more perspective on different religions, especially like Hinduism. Like I didn't know anything about it. And it was cool to see its impact in the Western world. That does sound very interesting. I don't know, like for me, what would be my favorite class? I'd say for this semester, I'm taking tennis. So I'm doing, I'm doing a sports mm-hmm. class, like Hari, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having a great time, also two hours a week. I um, actually had it, like, I think today, today's Friday, by the way. So I have it on Fridays. And then, um, yeah, that was a really fun class. And I've taken, I've taken, I've done soccer and physical conditioning in the past, which is also super fun. Like I used to play soccer in the rain my freshman year. And I literally got graded to go outside and play one of my favorite sports, which is fantastic. But um, yeah, I just want to just let you all know that be in just being a engineer at USC you're not just tied down to just chemical engineering courses you know you get to take other fun courses like I know like I've taken a vocal class as well and I'm right now I'm currently taking a film class where I watch movies every week and then do like a discussion and film analysis talk about it which is really really fun oh my goodness I'm doing the same thing next semester but with Broadway musicals oh my gosh I love these films <sighs> are you excited for it Oh, I, I'm pumped. I'm I'm absolutely pumped. And part of it was like on me because I didn't plan my GEs well for my undergraduate time. Like I, there's some GEs that or some GE classes that you know how they double count for different um requirements. Yeah. And I really thought that the ones that I had taken so far were double counting in the ways that I meant to. Uh, but I was mistaken. So I have to take one more. Um, I have the space to do it. It's not like I'm gonna be here for longer graduating later. But now like full flexibility i'm gonna take a class where i get to watch a musical every week and that's my homework assignment and i'm (laughs) i'm here for it like that's that's a real senior year type vibe that i'm not complaining in the slightest about no like i'm telling you those movie courses are fantastic to take it's just like oh i get to use my brain in a different way you know gotta look at cinematography and just like what the like what the producer or the director meant and showing me these images, which is different from solving like my math problems or my chemical engineering homework. Yeah. And I'd say the film one, especially like we're we're at USC, we're at a really good film school. So like that's a really good opportunity to take. Did they ever get any like um, guest speakers who are like just famous directors or actors in the film industry to come talk to you about any of these things or? Not in this specific class, but I know other courses at USC specifically within like the cinema school that mm-hmm. do bring in guest speakers or they like they show you the films before it premieres things of that nature because we are like one of the best schools of the nation for a film but yeah you definitely like you're not cut off from the other fun parts about usc we live in los angeles like we we know that there's going to be lots of artistic talent and everything just floating around within miles of us that is fact for sure okay guys now we're just gonna get like i don't know just dive delve deeper into like what we all do on campus so I personally think that chemical engineering is very hard and so like with that how do we all kind of manage to be involved on campus and still get all of our work done and um, as you answer could you just talk more about what you're involved in on campus and just kind of how you've progressed throughout your time here at USC um I feel you can go Julia okay um I guess in terms of managing, like, I don't know if manage is the right word. I feel like you just do it and you just, like, deal with the fact that, like, you're going to be, like, extremely busy. You're going to have late nights and you just have to be, like, really organized to be able to get all your work done. And I feel like over the course of my four years, like, I've had to work, like, really hard in order to get, like, decent grades and also be involved in everything and have friends. and like pursue like um th- like pursue like different internships and stuff like that like it's definitely like really hard and challenging to manage through everything but 
like again like everyone's done it everyone's going through the same thing and like you definitely like everyone can definitely get their stuff done too and personally like I've been involved with Theta Tall um, since my freshman year and I've been in leadership for them as well and then I've also done research on campus which is definitely like a very big commitment because I was like researching like 10 to 20 hours a week which is like a lot to put on your schedule because it's not like you're just like sitting there and doing nothing like you're actively like doing experiments well at least for me I was actively doing experiments and running different things in the lab and it's definitely stressful um, especially because like you're probably like in class or in lab from like nine to six or eight to six every day so it's like really hard to find time to do your homework and and then also just like I've just been in like separate clubs. Like I've been in this club called Tassel, which I've been in since like high school. It's like a volunteering club where you like help Cambodian children with English. And um, I mean, like it's definitely been challenging throughout like the four years because chemical engineering is hard, but I think like being able to balance your schedule and like putting yourself in the best position and surrounding yourself with the best people will really help you to get through like the four years of college with this major. Okay, uh, I was gonna, I could go. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's really hard to balance like a social life, schoolwork, sleep and work experience. And I found the way to kind of balance it better if you want all of those things is to not try to be the best in all of those things, if that makes sense. So. With school, I try not to study as many hours, and that might mean I might not have straight A's, but I still get, you know, decent enough grades. And, like, a social life, that might mean, like, not going out every weekend, but going out every other weekend and things like that. So not trying to do too much in every category is the way you can have enough time. But I do find it is hard to go to club meetings because a lot of the times, like, the days they have it and the times but I try to go as much as I can, but it's, it is very hard. No, I, I feel that there's like, it's really, um, it's like a different perspective from high school in which like, I know lots of people approach high school and like approach clubs with the intent of like, oh, this is gonna be something that looks good on my college application. Um, but that mindset really isn't, or like is significantly decreased in college because now you can just, you have more flexibility to do things that you just love. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean you have to have a leadership position or push for a leadership position in these clubs. Like you can show up to like their general meetings once a month or once every two months and still call yourself a member. And that's still like valid and uh, warranted involvement. Like, I think that's, I think it's a valid thing to do. Um, personally, like I do find myself a little or sometimes spread too thin with like um, the chemical engineering curriculum and the things I do. Um, like I'm one of the captains of the club ultimate Frisbee team here. Um, I have a job where I review, um, physics too, like the electricity and magnetism stuff for the students taking that class, like a TA type job. Um, I'm involved with research and I also am a big part of the chemical engineering student organization here on campus. It's called AKI, American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Um, and one of the, some would call it unhealthy, but I just call it, um, I'm prioritizing the things that I enjoy it's really easy for me to want to work on things that are not schoolwork. Like (laughs) I would much rather try to figure out the logistics of like a fun event that I'm planning for any one of these orgs rather than work on my like reactor design homework that's due the next day. And it has gotten me into some like tough, sticky situations, but like that's the appeal of clubs. Like you are doing the things that you love extracurricularly. There's no pressure to choose the ones that are looking better or looking Um, that are going to help you on in the future as much, um, especially when you're getting a degree in chemical engineering, that's going to be extremely valuable in itself. Um, But I just, involvement has been a big part of just my time, the three, two and a half to three years that I've spent at USC so far, and it's really enriched that experience for me. Also, I I swear by Google Calendar. I I love my GCal. I would do, I would not be able to do the things that I do if I always didn't have that tab open on my computer and I didn't check it numerous times a day. I second that. I live by my Google Calendar. If it's not on my calendar, it does not exist, which is bad sometimes because I don't put in meal breaks. So sometimes I do forget to like 
eat breakfast or lunch or something. Oh no. For the most part, <laughs> yeah, for the most part, like if it's on my calendar, it does not exist. So I, I feel you on that. What about you, Alex? What have you been involved in on campus? Yeah, so I on my end, I have e-board positions, or I guess had since I'm not taking classes right now, um, in Quest, which is uh, careers in engineering science and technology, and also SHIP, um, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. Um, have also had a few work study jobs here and there. Um, the nice thing about those is that sometimes, um, you know, you can do like your homework and still earn money if it's not a busy day. But going back to the whole thing of managing Kemi, I think first and foremost has to be, you know, making peace with the fact that you're probably, unfortunately, going to have a bunch of sleepless nights. And as Alina said, a lot of tears, but for a good cause, right? Um, but I think at the end of the day, one of the biggest things that has helped me manage beyond, like, you know, being organized using Google Calendar or like being resourceful is tapping into, you know, the fact that, you know, at least in my experience, the chemical engineering class that I've been a part of is extremely collaborative. And I think that's something that um, I have felt very lucky to have because I, I know some engineering students at other universities where they don't always have the most um, support from their peers, given that, you know, as you all know, sometimes the professor is like, oh, only the top 15% of students will get an A and suddenly that disincentivizes some students from helping others because they feel pitted against each other. But I think, you know, talk, talking to your friends, especially like when you're doing an assignment, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, oh, I'm stuck on a problem um, for a few hours. Maybe your friend knows how to do it. And instead of, you know, spending more time, you know, almost breaking your head open, um, they can help you out. And at the same time, on top of saving you know, your precious time, it teaches you to um, rely on others and see how others approach problem solving, which I think, you know, for an engineer that's probably going to be working in a team environment is invaluable in, a, in itself. Now, Alex, you make a great point. I know that just to add on, um, in one of my classes this semester on the syllabus, it literally says like, it's like, do you do your homework together? Like you form a study group? And even for like my project, a professor, like they encourage collaboration. USC is very, USC's like engineering program is very altruistic in that manner, which I appreciate. It's also one of the main reasons why it's like, I also stuck with the major because whenever I was stuck, I didn't have to like struggle on it for like 10 hours by myself. You know, I had different people that I could ask or even the professors because they're just always there to like help you out. And then I'm just like on the topics of like involvement and just measuring like kind of, figuring out your time on campus within the major. I know that like, like Hari, I literally live off my Google calendar. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I'm on the club field hockey team here at USC. And I was also on the club golf team up until this semester because of like chemical engineering. Of course, that is kind of take a step back for my own mental health from some events. So like, yeah, I'm on hiatus from club golf, but I'm still very involved in club field hockey. And um, I literally love that. I've been doing this since my freshman year. I played field hockey um, all of high school. And uh, I'm also kind of the, kind of, I am also the executive house manager of Children Event Services. So like my involvement outside of chemical engineering have nothing to do with like math or science. So as the executive house manager of Children Event Services, I literally help run all of the events that USC hosts on campus from its historic venues like Boulevard Auditorium to um, working with the School of Dramatic Arts to put on their, like, their student performances or just like concerts that happen on campus. I am the main source for organizing that. And we're currently in our busy season because it's, um, it's like admitted students, admitted students then it's Discover USC. So there's a lot of events going on. And I just kind of have to manage that with my schoolwork. Um, in addition to that, I am a Viterbi student ambassador as well as a Viterbi graduate assistant. And I am like Julia, I am part of the en professional engineering organization Theta Tau. And Theta Tau has been a big help. Like I think that's how Julia and I also got closer outside of our major. It was just because like yeah. I got to interact. Yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> I got to interact with not just like other chemical engineers, but other engineers within Theta Tau. Like, yeah, within USC and just kind of like get to be social with other engineers to kind of understand the struggle that goes into engineering and things of that nature. So it's, yeah, we definitely, we are all super involved and 
and we're managing it and we're thriving. Three of us, uh, two of us are graduating this year and another two next year. And we're just all doing our best. We're doing our best. I guess the way that pe- when like people ask how I'm doing house school, the way that I put it is like, I am probably like in the most stressed I've ever been, but I'm also like thriving more than I've ever been before. And those can certainly coexist as contradictory as it may seem. Like I have found, like I do feel like I'm really enjoying my time here. And then I do feel like, wow, there are lots of deadlines and lots of assignments and lots of things to keep track of. Um, Elaine, I had a question for you. Have you met anyone cool through that um, or had any cool experiences through that executive programming event role that you were just talking about? I'm curious. I feel like there could have been some cool connections there. Oh, my goodness. That's a good question. I'm, I, I have met so many cool people. And sometimes, cause like I'm from Delaware, you know, and even before like moving to Delaware, I'm an immigrant. So like I was born in Nigeria, I moved here in 2008. And like, I don't really know famous people that well. So when I was a freshman, I was just an usher. And I remember like, I was, this was in Boulevard Auditorium and it was a play called Funhouse. And I was like leading guests to their seats. Like, oh, here, you can sit here. And I just met this woman and she looked so familiar. And I was like, oh my gosh, like she looks familiar. And I told her that I, I liked her braids. And then I spent the entire shift trying to figure out who she was in my head because I li- I suck at recognizing famous people. Then I found out that she was like, I think, Amanda Steinberg from Everything, Everything and The Hate You Give. And I was oh. just like, I know. I was mind blown. And <laughs> They're just like casually on campus, just like here for Um, for like one night for an event and no one knew anything of it. Yeah. Literally just snuck in. And I was, and I led her to her seat and I was like, wow. And just like outside of that, like I've interacted with Kareem Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I've interacted with Chelsea Clinton. I know. I've interacted with Ali Wong. Like, I think that, oh, I don't know. Like uh, Bridget Mendler is actually coming on campus this, I think in two weeks. And I'm working that event. And it's just like, there's just so many cool things happening. I've been with like some of the members of Queer Eye because they frequent USC to give talks with some of um, USC's LGBTQ commu- like clubs and organizations here on campus. And it's just, it's a, such a fun job. And with like non, in, like with inanimate objects, I saw my first hologram during one of my shifts. I, 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 I don't know. I literally love my job so much. I have been mind blown every event that I work on on campus. You know, and it's it's been a fun time. It's been a fun four years. <laughs> yeah, Bridget Bridget Mendler's an alum, isn't she? Is she? Yeah, I think so. She is. Um, and so is um, also from Good Luck Charlie. Bradley Stephen Perry just graduated last year, and I did see him on campus once. Um, or no, he graduated two. No, it was last year. But then my freshman year, two years ago, I was like skating in one direction. He was biking in the other direction. I did a double take, and I'm like, hold on, I recognize that face from my TV <laughs> in my living room. Like, I know who that is. No, that, it's actually crazy. At USC, you get to see like just so many famous people, just cool things. And sometimes I forget that I live in Los Angeles, you know. And it's those moments that remind me when I'm just walking down campus and I just spot a famous director or you're walking down campus and you see Jeff Bezos, just random things you wouldn't see anywhere else. I see at USC. I see at USC. Okay, guys. And then with that, we're just kind of like going to go like deeper into um, if any of you guys have had any internship or research experience. So you can talk about uh, what did you like, where did you intern out or research? I know Julie already spoke. You mentioned a research position and um, yeah, just wanted to know like if any of your chemi- chemical engineering classes prepped you for those roles. Um, so for me, I had a research position sophomore and junior year with the Chung lab, which is a BME specific lab um, because I was more interested like in like the biochem aspect of chemical engineering. I decided to join the Chung Lab and the BME side of things. And I did research on atherosclerosis, uh, which is basically like buildup of plaque in your heart arteries. And it was definitely a really cool experience. I got like real like lab work done. And like, I was able to like work with like mice and like mice hearts and stuff. So that was definitely really cool. And in terms of like my coursework, that didn't really like help me with my internship, I guess, or not my internship, but that didn't really help me with my research position just because it was like so different and just like very much like, like an application 
and I was like such a young like chemical engineer at that point I didn't like take all the classes yet and then this past summer I interned at Procter and Gamble for the research and development internship and that was mainly focused on sustainability so like very different from like my emphasis and also like my major because it was more of like a mechanical engineering focus rather than a chemical engineering focus and I definitely learned about like structures of like different um, like plastic materials and fiber materials so it was like a combination of like mechanical engineering and material science which was really cool because like with chemical engineering like I'm definitely like not as interested in like oil and gas and like a lot of the things that we're learning with like processes and stuff like that so being able to like work in the industry like very different from my major and like have that opportunity to really be able to be like part of something that's a little different and like really enjoy it that's been really nice and like full-time like I'm going to go back to PNG and like my main focus is mainly on like mechanical engineering and like developing packaging so that's definitely really cool even though like my major doesn't exactly apply like they really just see like my engineering background and see that I can solve problems so that's definitely like what's been helpful congratulations Julia on the full time thank you that's that sounds like a lot of fun that's so cool I'm glad you well now you're coasting for the rest of senior year because you you have that stuff (laughs) figured out for you but that's really cool (laughs) yeah thank you (laughs) Yeah, I can go next. So I am currently basically taking a gap year. Um, I was supposed to graduate this May, but last year I ended up getting a six month co-op offer from Amgen for process development. So for that, I ended up working for a pilot plant where I learned a lot about the production of monoclonal antibodies and other protein-based therapeutics that treat, you know, everything from like cancer, inflammation conditions. And Um, I think going into that, I was really nervous because as, you know, a chemi and as like people have kept saying, it seems like a lot of chemi at USC is more oriented towards like oil and gas or like that type of more stereotypical process. And, you know, coming from the material science emphasis, it was truly just so much different and so much information that I had not yet taken in for many of my classes, but at the same time, Um, I found that, you know, little things that I would see, you know, on the job, um, I would still recall from, you know, a class here or there, like if they wanted to centrifuge cell culture fluid um, before, you know, converting that into a drug, Um, you know, a little bit of fluid mechanics there, a little bit of physics, not not anything like, you know, too detailed, but vaguely, I think it did help. Um, Currently, I am in Boston because I am working as an mRNA process development co-op for Moderna, um, where I work under their COVID-19 vaccine program. And I think that even more so than my Amgen process development co-op has been like a huge learning experience because a lot of it, even though it, it still overlaps with, you know, some engineering principles, a lot of it is like biochem and, you know, learning how a vaccine Um, triggers the immune response in the body and how that relates to the way in which, you know, you formulate your chemical reactions to make, you know, the product that targets, you know, an infectious disease. And I think if anything, that says a few things, right? One, you know, it's okay if you end up getting an internship offer and you're a little bit nervous because, you know, you might not know everything that's under the job description, but also, you know, if if you're a chemi and like you're not sure what type of emphasis to pick, um, it 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 won't like pigeonhole you into something um, because you know the material science emphasis here has had only like biotechnology co-ops. So I think at the end of the day, it's it's reassuring to um, understand that that is the case and that you know as long as you know you try in that any type of job or internship that you get as a student. Um, it'll usually work out. I can kind of like go next. Um, I know that with me, I haven't had any research positions on campus. I wasn't really interested in research. um, So I didn't go down that route. 
But last summer, I did have an internship working for the California Resources Corporation, which is in the oil and gas industry. So they are the main providers of energy for the state of California. And for them, I got to work in their like um, their upstream oil department, in which I was a reservoir engineer. So I was actively involved in um, just kind of like finding oil wells and just like learning what is beneath the ground and our water systems and just how we power the state of California. And so I was involved in exploration. Um, I actually created a, with a voidage reduction ratio sheet for them that got submitted to the state um, for just kind of maintenance. So not only like, are we exploring oil wells or are we like also closing off old oil wells because California as well as most of them have been open for over 100 years. Um, and like it might have emissions like, emitting into the air. I created this system in which we could track that, in which we can kind of like find the gas to oil ratio and we can find problematic wells, problematic reservoirs and fix those. And so it was like, it was very, it was a super, super interesting um, internship in which I got to literally use specific aspects of some of my classes, like my well logging classes, as well as my like testing of uh, like water aquifers class within my job description. So I was like, it was at that moment, I remember I emailed one of my professors and I was like, thank you so much for teaching me this because I just did a presentation at work and I could understand what was going on because I had learned this in class, which is like kind of like a duality with the chemical engineering degree at USC because it is kind of more focused on the um, oil and gas department. It like benefited me um, in that aspect for my internship. How are you, Doc? Do you guys have any research experience or internship experience? Or do you already yeah. planning on getting some? Yeah. Okay, for me, I don't have any previous experience, but I do have an internship this summer. And that was honestly the hardest interview I've ever done. I hadn't like interviewed with any chemi company before. And this one was very technical based and it was a lot about what I knew and like previous courses I took. And that was very important. But it seems like it's going to be more based on the chemistry knowledge I have versus like engineering processes because it's an R&D role for um, new paints for an automotive supplier. So yeah, I'll let y'all know how it goes. Congratulations on getting an internship. Thank you. Yeah, um, I can talk about it a little bit. Um, I spent last summer, I had a virtual thing with um, Argonne National Laboratory, which is local to where I was, suburb of Chicago. It's like 30 minutes away. Um, so it didn't really matter that it was all virtual. Um, but that was, I got that through, I think the program is called SULI, Science Undergraduate Laboratory Internships. And it's a very, it's a very robust program. They take in hundreds and hundreds of um, interns each year and then scatter them all the, at all the different national labs across the country. Um, and that's like a really cool experience because these are like very, very high-end researchers doing very important and necessary and technical research and you just get to be a part of that and they have great mentorship they really take their interns like um in stride and try their best to um involve them in whatever projects are going on i actually got was able to take that work um, and my principal investigator at the time had lots of connections with these various conferences that were going along at or around uh during that summer and the fall after um so i got to like present at a couple of conferences virtually um this past fall and add those things to my resume just because I was able to have that connection um, from this internship program that really prided itself in giving students opportunities to succeed. Um, apart from that, I also mentioned earlier, I do some on campus research. Um, and that's what I'll be doing this summer too, just um, full time staying around campus hanging around here, um, but really trying to like make some progress in the projects that I have. That's amazing. You all are very accomplished, <laughs> very busy people. And so like just with that, we're getting to the, towards the end of our podcast. And I just wanted to hear from each of you. It's um, so like, what are some things that, like some tips that you have for underclassmen or potential chemical engineers um, that want to apply to USC and USC's Viterbi program in general? Use Google Calendar. We've talked about it already. <laughs> I'm going to bring it up again. I stand by it and I will always stand by it. It is so beautiful, so, so phenomenal, so necessary, I would, I would add. I'd say go to office hours. Like, um, I sometimes struggle with conceptual thinking and in class they are usually broad in their lectures. So when you go to office hours, they can help put the little pieces that you're missing 
and bring it together. And it just, yeah, it helps a lot. Uh, I think some advice that I have is based, it's kind of just like, if you don't really know what you're doing right now and you don't really know what you want to do in the future, like that's definitely like totally okay. I feel like as you go through college, you kind of like shape like what you're interested in, what you want to go into and like getting different, being able to get different experiences in different areas. Like, for example, for me, like I was able to get experience in research and I realized that like, I don't really like like, like medical research that much. And then I was able to work in the sustainability field and like research in that. And I thought, found that to be really cool. And that's like what I'm going to go into in the future. So I think like, that's definitely like very different from what, I initially thought I was going to do when I first came to USC so I think like being able to see that like you're going to change in these four years and like be okay with that and you definitely don't need to know like exactly what you're doing when you come in. Yeah to add on to all of that I think um, another piece of advice that I would give is to really leverage the fact that um, chemical engineering seems to be a very collaborative environment um, because you know understanding that this is a discipline that's gonna be extremely challenging and demanding because, you know, on top of the coursework, you have, you know, internships, you have social life, sleep. Sometimes the people that you are able to call your friends are gonna be the people who um, help you out in those weeks where it's extremely difficult. And sometimes they can make all of the difference in, um, you know, how fast you complete something or even the grade that you get. And, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people will find some of their best friends, you know, in their major or in college in general. And then I'll just like for me, I would just say, like, don't forget to have fun. You know, like we're in college. Obviously, we are in engineering and engineering is hard. But coming to USC, just going to college, you have the opportunity to tap into like different industries that you're interested in even if it's like outside of your major whether it's in entertainment or you want like a little a minor in like arts or music or whatever you have the freedom and liberty to do more with your degree than just engineering and that's just like something that I find that is really really cool and just like really amazing because I I know so many people that are in Viterbi that are doing things like they're studying political science or they're doing philosophy in addition to that so yeah, don't limit yourself just because you think, oh, like I can only do engineering. The thing is you can do more than just engineering. And with that, that's the end of our podcast. I want to take this time to thank our guest speakers today, Julia, Alex, Harry, and Agath. Thank you all so much for joining me on this podcast. Well, thank you for Elena for inviting us. It was a thank lot of you. fun. You did a great yeah, job thanks. facilitating. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thanks, Elena. Definitely was all fun. Well, Elena, awesome. Thank you so much for putting this panel together. Um, you know, what, what I'm super curious about is um, did, uh, in this idea of studying chemical engineering, when, when you were in high school, was it always like this idea of chemical engineering? When did you actually get ex- interested in chemical engineering? Um, for me, I went to a high school for engineering, so I was an engineering major in high school, so I kind of knew that I wanted to go down the engineering path because I liked to design things, I liked to create things, and engineering was kind of the focus of what I could do with that, and then I ended up choosing chemical engineering because I love chemistry, obviously, but also um, I come from a country where we don't have constant electricity, so I knew that I wanted to go into the energy sector because I found out that energy is power and being able to provide that kind of defines um, what makes a country like powerful and what makes a country more connected to the global world. So I just wanted to be a part of that change as well as just um, working on carbon sequestration and low carbon energies for the future. Emily, welcome back. Did you wanna ask any other questions? We're on, on the back end now. I think you kind of stole my question because I oh. like actually at Explore yesterday, I was talking to a lot of the like future chemical engineers and they they were kind of asking me like how I knew BME was right and I think chemi is one of those ones that um is kind of tough to know like where if it's the right fit for you yeah um but I really liked what Elena said about like focusing on energy and because it's more than just chemistry and I think that's important to note um because even if you just like chemistry I think that chemical engineering there are a lot of other factors you should consider before like choosing it 
No, I agree. It's, it's, I'm sorry, Elena, what? I was going to say that chemical engineering, it's like most people think it's a lot of chemistry, which it is, but it's also a lot of math and a lot of physics. It's a lot of like applications mm -hmm. of mathematics and physics. That's, that's true. Um, you know, what is, what's interesting is that when students are asking, how did you know it was right? I think that's where I, I think that they've got the wrong idea in the question that they're asking, because it's not like you knew it was right. It's just like you knew that it was something that you enjoyed. So you kind of mm -hmm. continued down the path. It's not like you've said, I've chosen my one thing I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Uh, it's just that you, you found some sort of immediate, you know, return uh, on your interest, if that makes any sense. Like you, you found some sort of something that kept you going that was that was fascinating and interesting and 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 it continued to be so it's not like you decided like oh i have cast away all others and i think that's what a lot of high school students end up doing is they think like mm -hmm. there's some sort of moment where everything clicks and you all believe that it's exactly what it is you're supposed to be doing and i don't think that's the case right like it's just it, you just kind of continue to like it right yeah that's true and even like within industry i know a lot of chemical engineers that did something else or a lot of biomedical yeah. engineers that went into like a chemical engineering field so you're not really locked into anything it's just more of like following your interests and following what you want to do that's totally the point yeah because mm -hmm. yeah even once you have the degree who says you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life right it's just it's yeah. it's a constant movement and i think that's where we have to try to get high school students um away from that idea of you're you're in this game to find an end answer like an, an ending point and, and there is no ending point yeah and i think like within like the USC community, people think that as a biomedical engineer, all you can do is like eat, sleep, breathe biomedical engineering and like re do research in biomedical engineering, which most people do, but you can definitely like branch out. I know some, some of my students at Explore, when they heard there were only 22 BME faculty, they were like, oh my gosh, like how do people find labs? But it is so easy to find labs. And there are like, people do like there are electrical engineering professors that do BME research and there's just so much intersection. I feel like it's hard to be like, oh, I'm just a chemical engineer or just an electrical engineer because we're always like in the cross sections and we're always kind of like working in these areas that are kind of like more blurry. What exactly is like the main field of engineering that we're doing? Yeah, I'd say that's true actually of a lot of engineering disciplines. I mean, just yeah. when you said biomedical engineering, the, there's a certain amount of work is done in biomedical engineering that has to involve electrical engineers mm -hmm. or that has to involve mechanical engineers or has to involve chemical engineers, depending on what the end use application is. So and that, I guess that's the other point too, is that no matter what discipline you're looking at, uh, it's going to be, when, when you're looking at end use applications, it's going to be an interdisciplinary effort uh, at, the very, at the very minimum. Yeah, 100%. Well, Elena, thank you so much for bringing this conversation to the podcast. Really appreciate that. Hopefully I will see you both again real soon. And for all of you listening out there, we'll be back with another episode coming at you in the next week or so. So have a great day. Bye.